I've had a lot of different ideas of how we're gonna make today happen. Ultimately, I've decided that we are just gonna drive the 458 up to SOS. It makes a lot more sense and makes our life a lot easier if we could just trailer this car up. But unfortunately, now with the width on the car, we're simply not able to fit it in our enclosed trailer and we certainly can't fit it on our open trailer. We could just technically remove the whole entire kit, but SOS says they want the kit put together because it helps them when they go to spray the car. We've done the best calculations that we can and we think it should be fine. The car currently doesn't have any fender liners in the front or in the rear. Everything's hard mounted so we should be fine to drive it up. SOS is only about a 30 minute drive up the freeway. Nothing too crazy. We do rub a little bit in the front fenders but nothing too crazy. So like I said we should be okay. So right now Calvin and I are just walking around the car doing a bolt check making sure everything is pretty much tight. Making sure nothing's gonna fly off on the freeway. Making sure that we're not gonna lose anything and kill anyone falling behind us, things of that nature. We're gonna go over the car, make sure it's all good, and we're gonna drive up to SOS and drop this thing up for paint, and then we have to do some slight disassembly up there to kind of help them with the process. So just like classic Ferrari, our battery ended up killing itself over the last couple days it's been sitting here. We've been making an effort to make sure that it doesn't die by doing routine checks, but we went out this morning getting ready to go out, and it smoked itself, so we had to take this all apart to go ahead and jump it. And I've heard a bunch of rumors that like it's bad to jump these cars and it isn't and it is and blah 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 but I reached out to my Ferrari rep and he was like we jump ours all the time you should be fine all right so let's hope this works because if it doesn't we need to tend the battery or buy a new one so let's hope this thing starts we went to start it and we heard like a big click it almost sounded like a fuse, just like blue. We're gonna try one more box to see if it works. It's now 24 hours later. The car would not start yesterday, even with all of our jump boxes. And with doing some research online, sometimes people said that these cars need 100% of their battery to turn the motor over. Um, so long story short, before we have to troubleshoot, have to start this car and get a new battery and go through all that route, I ended up putting my battery tender on this car overnight. And after about 24 hours, we're finally at 100%. I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed here. We're gonna see if the car starts and turns over. Hopefully it does so we can move on with our day because now we're a day behind on paint because we could not get this thing started yesterday. Moment of truth, please, 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 the Ferrari gods, help me out right now. younger I didn't realize how important credit was when I went to go buy my GTR and I was 21 I got hit with the your credit isn't good enough quote I had enough money to buy the car but because I didn't have a large credit history I got hit with a huge interest rate for the car this is where upstart could have helped me back then and it can help a lot of you guys who might be in the same similar boat as I was upstart goes farther than your traditional credit scores when it comes to assessing your credit worthiness upstart bases their decision off of things like your education your previous job history things of that sort to help develop you a smarter credit score once your loan is approved and accepted, most people will receive their funds the very next day. Upstart can help you get rid of high interest rates, pay off old debt, or even make large purchases. Upstart is ranked number one in their category, and the best part is they consolidate everything with an easy monthly payment plan. Click the link down below in the description to check to see what your rates would be today. Thank you so much for Upstart for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. Calvin and I are about to make our trek up to SOS. Calvin is gonna be following close behind me, just because the car is a bit, uh, Mangled, but it's definitely we're asking for trouble if a cop comes behind us. <laughs> I have all the paperwork and I have everything necessary for the car, but there's no place to mount the license plate. I don't want to duct tape it, so I'm gonna roll the dice. If we get pulled over, it'll be quite an interesting story. Calvin's gonna fall behind in the Supra and stay close behind, so just in case anything flies off, it hits his car instead of another person's car. Nice. That sounded bad, oh, but oh, it's yeah, it's safer that way, no, trust no, me. No, that's right. I've been driving for like five minutes now for the most part. It's not too loud because one of the biggest things you guys don't remember is I was concerned of how loud it would be when we were rolling over stuff now with the carbon Kevlar rather than like hard plastic with rocks and stuff. Not hearing too much. Every now and then, I've heard like three times, I'll hear like a big like, almost sounds like I'm cracking something, which 
I know it's not possible, and we're not gonna touch the fender, I'm going straight or anything, but it's probably just a big rock or something hitting the diffuser underneath the car or something, so. Trying to stay calm, everything is good though. It, it does feel really good to drive this car again. Um, and I'm getting a whole bunch of ridiculous looks from people because this car looks like, well, it looks like crap. <laughs> we're about to go on the freeway where we're gonna be doing our high speeds. By that I mean like 80 miles an hour, which isn't too bad, but I'm getting a bunch of weird looks like that from fellow car people that are like, what the hell? Because I have my taped up headlights, we have the red bumper, red fenders, white everything else, the black over fenders, it looks like mess. It looks like a mess. And we're also like spaceship fitment with the wheels and whatnot. But so far so good. I'm trying to remain calm and enjoy the ride while it lasts. Not turning too sharp here to take out my fenders. Gotta take everything a little wide. But near the end, I could have sworn I heard something fall off the car, and Calvin said he saw something. All of our brackets are here, though. Was it black? We painted everything black. Was it black. silver? It uh -oh. didn't look like it was too big. Like it was too square and too big. It didn't look like a bracket that you made. Every now and then, I would hear like what sounded like dropping like a Allen key, like on the floor. I didn't know if it was something from the car or whatnot. But <laughs> everything's so very tight, like nothing. And it wasn't that loud on the freeway either. Really? Like I didn't, I didn't. If you, if I was blind, it didn't sound any different, or I wouldn't have noticed anything. If that makes sense. That was a really bad analogy, but I didn't really notice too much of a difference. Yeah, yeah. Now this is your problem. Calvin and I will take these off for you, okay. and then we can remove that. We just yeah. had to get to a spot. It will take us like an hour or so. Okay. Oscar made us promise him that before taking the Ferrari here, we would take the mirrors off and some door trim off. But the issue was. Again, the Ferrari does not fit on a trailer. That would have been perfect if it did because we would have taken the mirrors off early. We're here today fulfilling the promise we made, having to remove these door panels again and these mirrors again. Just a decent grocery getter. Don't worry about the jerry can. Let's just say the BRZ is kind of dead at the moment because I'm a bad father. So that's why we got a jerry can. We're tearing apart the car right now, getting everything stripped uh, so SOS doesn't have to do it. And it's, uh, oh, Calvin apparently already updated you guys, so I don't need to tell you. <laughs> I did it. What you got going on over here, Teach? Literally, oh, I forgot to disconnect it. Oh, look, you for... look at my hand over here. <laughs> okay, I'll hold oh, it. Man. I'll hold it. Yeah, Calvin and I have gotten like really good except that little boo-boo I just made. We like literally that was, tag team this car. That was so fast. And get it tearing apart like shockingly fast. We're probably just as good as taking this car apart as we are taking our beers these apart. I'm probably better at taking this apart than my beers. Really? Probably. Maybe you just forgot. Yeah, that's mainly why. Hmm. Just some good teamwork, Tej. Just some good teamwork. Job done. Our job here, yeah, is done. We've taken everything apart. Car is ready for paint. They kind of have a lot of body work to do. Should we go over the body work that needs to get done? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So we'll start from the back. There's a bunch of holes in the rear bumper. You guys are familiar with that. Literally every hole that isn't a mesh for the bottom end and isn't a bumper motion sensor and a wing cutout is all gonna get filled. These big boys, that one and this one. These ones are for the Ferrari badge. Kind of need those, dude. Yeah, we'll need those. They're gonna patch up the backup light. They might be adding some material to the rear bumper. They're gonna see if they can get it to fit any better. Um, these guys are a body shop, so they will 100% be able to massage this better than we will. So if they can get it to fit better, all good. If not, we might add some uh, material here because Yes, this is a race car kit, but this is a street car. So I think some people are like, oh, how could you be cutting that kit? It's like, well, our kit isn't a race car. Our kit is a street car, and we're gonna modify it to work the best on the street. So we might be adding some material to that. We don't know. A bunch of this needs to get patched up as well. Uh, the, rear, the rear quarter fender is like pretty beat up. Yeah, if you look, while I was taking the wrap off, there's a whole bunch of cracks. This is definitely a race kit coming off a race car, but that, oh! Who did that? Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, in the front, again, more little body work. Just add a little filler to that. 
sand it over. Um, but our front fitment is perfect, and I'm gonna address this now, because I still get so many comments about this. Everyone's asking, you didn't get the GT3 hood, and you didn't get the GT3 mirror. What are you gonna do about that? You should get this kit, you should get the rest of the pieces, blah, blah, blah. From the very beginning, I have stated, I'm not the biggest, well, I do like the GT3 mirrors. Don't get me wrong, I think they look cool. But this, again, this is a street car. Um, I've asked Danny, shout out to Danny, who has the red one. I asked him, yo, you have the mirrors, how are they on the street and whatever? And he was like, well, one, they don't have electric control. Meaning like, if you need to adjust anything, you need to like get out and push them and move them around, which is a pretty big drawback for a street car. And the mirror is like that big, as opposed to the stock ones are pretty large. So visibility isn't that high out of them. For that reason, at the moment, I'm not gonna, not planning to throw them on. Also, they're like five grand for the mirror, so that also is a little something, but I can't justify it. I'd rather have full visibility when driving a priceless car, in my opinion, than not being able to see. Also, the hood. The GT3 hood, I don't wanna say doesn't work with a street car, uh, but hear me out. On the race cars, I'm gonna try to put up a photo right here so you guys can see what this all looks like. None of the aluminum brackets are here, that's all cut away, and there is no frunk, meaning the whole entire cooling system is completely different on the race car than on the street car. There's more ducting here, there's more radiators, there's a bunch more shrouding, so the hood literally has straight holes right here, dumping straight to the fan. On a street car, we are still using all the factory street components and have a working front. So when we close this, this will still be covered and will still be usable. If we had the GT3 hood, we would either need to modify it and close it, which would be lame, or we'd have to just run a, a wash, a, run a bucket and have literally have it filled with water and junk, which we do not want. So I've secured a 458 Special hood for this car, shout out to Exotic Auto Cycling. That hood actually shows up today. Unfortunately, we're not, probably not gonna catch it when it's being dropped off. But what's interesting about the Special hood is underneath here, where the vents are, there's actually like a cover that you can both in and out. So if you want it exposed, you can undo the covers and it has a pass-through. And if you want them closed up, meaning protecting the insides from, from elements, you can close it up. So that hood looks way better than the GT3 hood in my opinion, um, and it will be functional for a street car, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, the front bumper needs some touch-up work. We need to fill in some of these Kukos, or fill in some of the uh, Zeus tabs. Pretty straightforward, and that's it. Calvin and I didn't come here with the fender lines or anything like that because we're all gonna do that at our shop, but Oscar was like, we'll probably take the end of the week to do all the body work, and then said like, spray the car, I'll start spraying next week. So I don't expect to see this car for two to three weeks. That puts us getting the car back with about 30 days out from SEMA, which literally puts us right in the sweet spot. So definitely looking forward to that. Our wheels uh, from HRE should be here on the same time that our car gets done. So we're still good. So to do, we have to do the wing, the wing mounts, dial in our suspension. And yeah, other than that, we're sitting real pretty. So this is where we are leaving the car. Huge shout out to SOS. They are taking this thing in uh, with a million other products going on. They're also gonna be helping us out on something else that I haven't told you guys about yet. But I know they're gonna do a 10 out of 10 job. I trust them and that's the most important thing. So hopefully we can get this thing done quick. We can get back to this car and get it dialed up because there is a lot left to do on it.